All right, so in this episode, I'm going to uh, describe uh, one simple uh, principal agent model to study hidden information. All right, so don't forget, there are two players, one principal and one agent. All right, uh, the best known example in a uh, case of hidden information is uh, also called as screening problem or called second degree price discrimination because we assume that the principal is the monopolist firm who would like to sell some product to the customer and the agent is the buyer. All right. So once again, uh, this example, this, this model, this <clears throat> hidden information principal agent model, also known as screening problem or the second degree price discrimination. Well, what happens is that the monopolist, the seller, A or the principal, wants to screen the buyer of different types, meaning the monopolist wants different types of uh, the buyer by uh, a different consumption bundles so that monopolist can maximize its profit. Well, what are the preferences? What are the incentives of these players? Well, we assume that the principal chooses to sell some X amount of product, all right, in exchange for a payment, P, right? So you pay me P dollars, I'm going to sell you X units of uh, uh, product. Well, in this case, meaning if uh, monopolists sell X uh, in exchange for P dollars, well, the principal's profit, we assume that it's simple, revenue minus cost, as simple as this. All right, so P minus C times X. All right, so don't forget, you, we do not, the P is not the price per output. P is the price for the entire package. So X units of output the price is P, okay? So P minus C of X. Well, what is C? Well, C is the, uh, the cost function, the total cost function of the monopolist. So if you wanna produce X units of output, it, it costs you this much money. And once you sell this X to P price, well, P is going to be your revenue. And so P minus C X is your profit. Well, what about the agent? If the agent buys X, and pays P dollars to the monopolist, well, his utility is going to be this. V, it's a function of two things, X and theta, so uh, minus P, all right? So, so this is basically benefit minus cost. So what is the benefit? So this V function depends on X, you know, the more usually the V is an increasing function on both uh, components, meaning the more X, whatever this X is, the more X you, you buy, the happier, the, the more benefit you're going to get. And the theta, theta is the type of the agent, all right? So you can think of this uh, product, um, whatever this product is, maybe your willingness to pay is low, or maybe your willingness to pay is high. So this theta basically tells us uh, what your willingness to pay is, all right? So the, your willingness to pay depends on not only the, the, the amount of X you're buying, and uh, but also your type. So minus, obviously, the price you pay. So this is going to be the payoff of the agent. Well, here, we assume that the theta, the type of the agent, is, uh, well, coming from some mother space, capital uh, theta, think it this way. It's a random variable, all right? So this is a set. Uh, if, if, if you're seeing this notation for the very first time, don't be confused about it, is that the type is coming from some space, all right? So it could be, you know, two types, you know, a low, uh, a customer with a low willingness to pay or a customer with high willingness to pay. So therefore, this, this set is basically has two types or it could be a continuous distribution, right? I mean, your willingness to pay uh, can be distributed over some interval. So what we assume is that the theta is a random variable and its realization is only observed by the agent. So the agent knows how much he values this good, but the monopolist cannot observe this. Well, again, the principal cannot observe theta and, and therefore it is not uh, contractable. What does that mean? That means you cannot write theta 
into your contract, meaning you can't say, if you are type blah blah, then you have to pay me this. If you are type blah blah, well, then you have to pay me that. So you cannot condition your contract uh, with Tata. Why not? Well, that's the whole point. You can't observe Tata. And so you cannot um, uh, enforce uh, that the real types actually buys the contract that are designed for them. All right. So uh, for that reason, you cannot put Tata into contract. So we call it, it's not contractable. Well, the principal, although he doesn't know the true value of Tata, he has a prior belief about what Tata might be, or a prior distribution, or just probability distribution over Tata. All right. So if it is two types, for example, you can assume that the monopolist believes that the customer is has a low willingness to pay with some probability p and high willingness to pay with probability 1 minus p. If it is more than two types, for example, continuous number of types, for example, the types are distributed over 0, 1 interval, while maybe, for example, it's a uniform distribution, so some probability distribution. The principle has this prior belief, all right? So it's part of the model. The question is, under this scenario, what x the monopolist should choose and what p uh, the monopolist should choose. Well, obviously here, the packages, so the, the bundle is actually x comma p, right? The monopolist is going to choose, I am going to sell x unit of my product at a price p. But it doesn't have to be just one bundle. It can actually sell two bundles, x prime, p prime. Well, clearly x prime should be different than x. And obviously, if x prime is different than x, p prime should also be different than p, right? Why is that? Well, I mean, let's say x p is equal to 5, 10, meaning I sell, let's think of this x as the gigabytes, all right? So this, this is a prepaid SIM card or monthly uh, internet packages. And so you have uh, for cell phone 5 gigabyte monthly internet uh, at a price $10 per month. And X prime is, let's say, 10 gigabyte of internet. And so if you charge $10 for this package, clearly everybody, whether the customer is low willingness to pay or high willingness to pay, probably everybody, I mean, should everybody uh, buy this package rather than this package. Why? Well, because normally we assume that the benefit is an increasing function of X. So the more gigabyte is going to make everybody happier. At least it's not going to you worse. All right, so it's not going to decrease your utility. So therefore, instead of paying, you know, $10 to 5 gigabyte, well, I'm going to pay the same money for 10 gigabytes. So you know what? Uh, I'll buy this one, although I may not need 10 gigabyte internet. But you see what I mean? So if you offer different packages, that means different X's and different P's. So the question is, what should the monopolist do? How many packages should it offer? And what should be the content of this package? What is the X? What is the P? So I'm, continue, I'm going to continue to this model, to this simple uh, principal agent model with a specific example next.